Have you ever wondered why the State of the Union Address carries such weight in American politics? Is it merely a ceremonial tradition, or does it signify something more profound? To understand this, we must delve into the annals of history and trace the evolution of this significant event. The State of the Union Address, at its inception, was akin to a company meeting. The Constitution, in its wisdom, mandates the President to periodically update Congress on the State of the Union, a business update, if you will, from the CEO to the Board of Directors. This is how it began with George Washington and John Adams presenting written reports to Congress. But as with all things, change was not far behind. Along came Thomas Jefferson in the year 1801. Disenchanted with the British monarchy's tradition of a throne speech, Jefferson chose a different path. He sent his report in writing, marking a significant departure from the spoken address. Imagine a company meeting replaced by a flurry of emails. This practice continued for over a century. Fast forward to 1913, and we see Woodrow Wilson deciding to shake things up. He brought back the tradition of delivering the address in person, a shift akin to the CEO returning to the meeting room for a more engaging presentation. The 20th century brought with it the advent of technology, and the State of the Union address was not immune to its effects. In 1923, Calvin Coolidge's speech was the first to grace the airwaves of a radio like the company meeting being broadcast over the office speaker system. Harry Truman took it a step further in 1947, with his address being the first to be televised, transforming it into a national event, much like a live-streamed company conference. Recognizing the power of television, Lyndon B. Johnson in 1965 moved the speech to prime time, ensuring it reached the maximum number of people. Today, the State of the Union address is not just a report to Congress. It's an opportunity for the president to set an agenda and a potent tool for communicating with the public. It's the CEO delivering a business update, outlining future plans, and directly addressing the stakeholders, the American people. Adding another dimension to this event, 1966 saw the introduction of a televised response by the opposing party, much like the board members offering their perspective after the CEO's presentation. So the State of the Union address has evolved from a simple report to a national event. It mirrors the ever-changing dynamics between the President, Congress, and the American public. It's a testament to the vibrancy of American democracy and the importance of communication in politics. So, the next time you tune into the State of the Union Address, remember it's more than just a speech. It's a symbol of American democracy in action, a conversation between the government and its people, and a reflection of the state of affairs in one of the world's most powerful nations.